Hello everyone, I'm Sign One News anchor Martha Anger. Here's a quick look at the top trending stories making headlines today. If you post an interesting comment during this update, we may add it at the bottom of the screen. Today, Thursday, is day four of the week-long International Week of Deaf People Celebration, which has been celebrated every year for the past 70 years during the last full week of September. This year's theme is celebrating thriving deaf communities. And today's sub-theme is We Sign for Human Rights. September 23rd is also International Day of Sign Languages. Here is the official video from WFD's website explaining the importance of embracing all sign languages across the globe. Thursday, September 23rd, 2021. We sign for human rights. On this International Day of Sign Languages, we celebrate our collective efforts, deaf communities, governments, and civil society representatives to recognize and promote the over 200 different national sign languages around the world. Together, we sign onto a declaration of support for sign languages as an essential human right for deaf people and sign for human rights. We signed for human rights. I had to take advantage of that opportunity to sign that. There is now a growing memorial in Ogden, Utah at the spot where Gabby Petito took a photo for the last Instagram post she made during her cross country trip with her fiance, Brian Laundry, just days before she was found dead. The manhunt to find Laundry is ramping up in Florida on land, in the air, and now with a specialized dive team being brought in to help comb through every inch of the 25,000 acres in the Carlton Wildlife Reserve. U.S. Special Envoy to Haiti, Daniel Foote, has resigned, saying the reason is the, quote, inhumane and counterproductive decision to deport thousands of Haitian refugees from the U.S. border. Right now, about 5,000 Haitian migrants are living in a temporary shelter in Del Rio, Texas. But the Department of Homeland Security says 1,400 Haitians have been returned to Haiti. And Foote says... They have been returned to a country that is racked with poverty, crime, government corruption, lack of humanitarian resources. And he says that will have disastrous consequences, not just in Haiti, but in the U.S. and neighboring countries. According to Johns Hopkins University, the U.S. average daily COVID death toll just topped 2,000 deaths per day, the highest it's been in six months. In the 10 least vaccinated states, they are the ones in red, the COVID-19 death rate was four times higher this past week than in the 10 most vaccinated states. And experts say vaccine rates are still lower than they need to be, with about 55% of the U.S. population fully vaccinated. And the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says 
Over the past month, the rate of vaccination has fallen by 30%. A source says former President George W. Bush is holding a fundraiser for Republican Congresswoman Liz Cheney of Wyoming next month in Texas. Cheney's father, Dick Cheney, served as Bush's vice president, and she has been the target of harsh criticism from former President Donald Trump and his Republican loyalists ever since she and a handful of Republicans voted to impeach Trump after he allegedly incited the violent January 6th attack on the Capitol. Trailblazing director Melvin Van Peebles has died at age 89. Van Peebles was an accomplished author, playwright, advocate for independent filmmakers, and helped champion a new wave of modern black cinema in the 1970s with films like Watermelon Man and Sweet Sweetback's Bad Ass Song. His son, actor and director Mario Van Peebles, posted on social media, in an unparalleled career distinguished by relentless innovation, boundless curiosity, and spiritual empathy, Melvin Van Peebles made an indelible mark on the international cultural landscape through his films, novels, plays, and music. According to a Wall Street Journal report, Apple is reportedly working on software that looks at users' physical activity levels, sleep patterns, and mobility to screen for signs of depression and other mental health conditions. Apple, along with the University of California, Los Angeles, and biotechnology company Biogen are studying anxiety, depression, and stress as it relates to cognitive impairment and eventually develop an app for early detection of those conditions. Scientists at Purdue University in Indiana have created the world's whitest paint and it could help fight climate change. Most paints currently on the market only reflect about 80% of sunlight and they get warmer instead of cooler. But researchers say the new ultra white paint can reflect 98% of sunlight away from the building which means if a roof is covered with the new paint, it could result in a cooling so strong it would generate more power than air conditioners in most houses. Researchers have partnered with a company to get this paint on the market soon. We'll keep you updated. Sign One News will be broadcasting live updates Monday through Friday. Then this Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, join us for a live panel of diverse guests to discuss the hot topics of the week. Again, be sure to post your thoughts and comments at any time during any of the live shows. We might even share your comment. A big thank you to our Sign One News app supporters you help make this broadcast happen. You can download the Sign One News app by heading to the App Store or Google Play Store on your smartphone. And you can also watch on Apple TV, Apple Watch, Amazon, and Roku.